Welcome to the Timco Retail Manager course. This course focuses on real-world application development. One of the ways we focus on real-world application development is that you get to see me create bugs. I would love to tell you that I create these bugs on purpose, and it's all part of a master plan I'm orchestrating. Unfortunately, that is not always the case. In this video, we're going to fix a bug in the transaction code we wrote on Monday. Now, Patreon members, don't forget to head over to my Patreon site to get the source code. You will also be getting information about the first episode of my live show, which is coming soon. Now, I'll be hosting that on Patreon first as I work out the bugs, so keep an eye out for that. The work we're doing today is a result of a few messages I received from sharp-eyed viewers who pointed out the issues. So thanks to them for helping make this course better. And please make sure that you write your thoughts down in the comments. It has a direct impact on the course, as well as my other content. Okay, let's get started. So the problem we have right now, let me go right to it, is we created this transaction code. And this transaction code right down here, we start a transaction, we can do work on it, and then we can either commit or roll back. So if you dispose, we call the commit transaction, which calls the commit and close. The problem here is that if you call commit transaction and then call dispose, it does this twice, and the second time it throws an exception, which means it causes problems with your data. So we're going to fix that today. Now we can demonstrate this by going into our code that calls this, and making sure that it calls it directly. So let's go to our sales code. We have our commit transaction, we have our rollback, and our using is, is closing that as well. So let's put our breakpoint right down here on our dispose, and let's run this method. So once it, once it launches, I'll wait for the, the API to launch. It's almost there. It's slow the first time. Go ahead and log in. And we're just going to add a skillet and a toaster oven. Let's add one of everything. That's fine. And I hit checkout. And I hit commit transaction right here. I hit the breakpoint. Let's step into this. And transaction right now, if you notice, is not null. So transaction actually has information inside of it. Now the DB connection is null, but the transaction itself is not null. So when we get to it, we get this invalid operation exception. The SQL transaction has completed. It's no longer usable. So that's a problem because of the fact that we're trying to do it twice, and it's, it's saying you can't do that, and it throws an exception. So you want to fix that. Now, our transaction itself has been committed already. That's why this is all null, because of the fact that we did commit it on commit transaction. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this code a little more robust. Now, there's a few different options we could do. We could even look at the, the transaction itself and say, hey, is this... Has this been committed by looking at the object and see if it's null? But that might be a little messy. And I really want to set these to null as well to kind of clear out everything and make sure we start over fresh the next time we go to work with this. So let's do this. Let's create a variable, a private variable. So private bool is closed. We'll set that to false. And what will happen here is whenever we have a transaction open, this will be false. It's not been closed. Whenever we commit or roll back the transaction, we will set it to true. So let's go up to our start connection right up here where we begin the transaction and say is closed equals false. Just to make sure in case it was true, it's now false again, meaning it's open. Then we can come down to our two different locations. One down here is closed equals true. And then the rollback as well. 
is closed equals, oops, equals true, like so. And then we can wrap this in a if statement. So surround with, which is actually, looks like it's off the screen. Well, it's at the very bottom here, surround with. So let's do this. I'm going to cut this out since I can't really show it to you directly. I'm going to do it the manual way. That way you can see it. If is closed, is closed equals false. Yes, you can do the exclamation point instead of is in front of is closed. The problem is I find it hard to see. And therefore, you uh, have a hard time seeing the not there. So if it's not closed, then go ahead and commit the transaction. Either way, we're going to set the transaction equal to null and the connection equal to null. They are both fully closed. Okay. Now, there is a possibility of us still having an issue. And that issue might arise if we had done this first line, the commit the transaction, but we had failed on the next line possibly, or we had some other weird type of failure where transaction got blown up. In which case, we go to commit transaction. If this is not healthy, then it will have an exception thrown. We don't necessarily care about that, whether or not it succeeds, because if it doesn't succeed, then it's closed already. So I think what we're going to do is wrap just this right here. Move it up here so you can see my menu and say snippet surround with try. So just for this, we're going to wrap this in a try catch, only I'm not going to do anything with it. I'm just going to say, hey, if it failed, keep going, but then you'll set it to null. And that kind of resets things. Now, I do want to put a to-do in here to log this issue. We don't currently have great exception handling or great logging in our application. So those are things to tackle in the future, and that's on our to-do list. But... This right here will at least indicate that, yes, we do at least want to log this, but the user doesn't need to know about the exception because either way, that transaction will get disposed properly. So now our dispose should work just fine. Let's put a breakpoint here and run it again. And this time, make sure that no exception gets thrown. I wait for my API to load. It's loaded. And now if I add, let's add another 10 fluffy bath towels and check out. Now we're going to check to see if is closed is true. It's not. It's false. Therefore, we're not going to commit the transaction. Therefore, we set the transaction to null and the connection to null. And we continue. And there are no exceptions. Okay, so that is how we fix that little bug we introduced. Now, the bug would not have come into play if we had not closed out the transaction explicitly. So in our call over here, if we did not do this, then we would not have seen the bug. The bug would have been there, but just not visible. And so that's another reason why testing is a really good and really important thing. Not just testing exactly what you're doing, but testing the other alternatives as well to make sure that you're not throwing exceptions when you didn't expect it to. So let's commit our work. We've had the one file change. Fix transaction exception bug. Transactions that were explicitly closed would throw an exception because the trans the transaction was closed twice. Okay, something like that. We hit commit staged. We go to our s oops. That's not what I wanted. I wanted to go to my sync. 
And let's do a fetch first, make sure there's no changes in the server. There's not, so we'll go ahead and push that fix. And that's it. We've now committed our changes, pushed it up to our repository, and we're done. We can move on to the next uh, feature, which we're not going to do today, but I wanted to get that out of the way because I didn't want to have that type of bug just sitting in our in our software. Okay? So thanks for watching. Thanks for being, um, you know, looking at this code, making sure that it's right, reviewing it, and letting me know if you see any issues or see anything you want to see improved. I'd love to hear your thoughts again on anything else you want to see. Um, maybe give your thoughts on what type of logging framework you want to see implemented in the future, as well as um, other things of that nature. Okay, thanks for watching. As always, I am Tim Corey.